Hey guys, welcome to episode number two. Um, a lot happens in this video. I get my call towers folded and welded up, get the radius arm brackets all uh, welded in. I had to change some things up, um, you'll see later on in the video. And the diff's nearly ready to be welded up with a full truss and bracing. So thanks for watching, let's get stuck into it. So basically what I've done here behind me is I've put my arm in and I've welded on the second bracket and everything. Um, now on the table I've used this clamp just to set the diff at the right roll. So I can put a level across my bracket for the arm. Put them nice and perfect. And now I can go to the other side and replicate that exact, that exact angle and level it up and I can tack it all together. Put my arm in, tack the second second inside bracket on at the right gap. Um, then I should be able to put the diff back under the car and float it in there with the coil overs, which will be which will be pretty cool. Because um, we're at the stage now, we can weld our coil tabs on the other side, which the diff's upside down. And um, yeah, it's starting to take shape. Alright, so uh, I fucked up big time. Um, not big time, but I didn't really think this was fucking something I really should have thought of, but I didn't. The toe link hits the radius arm, so I've gone through and gone through the process of switching to flipped arms again, like I was originally going to do, and I'm just going to have to deal with losing up trouble, deal with the lower side chassis and brackets as shit as it'll be, but. Um, I've gone ahead and stripped the old uh, radius arm diff side brackets off. I've started making my new chassis and radius arm brackets. And um, yeah, I'm trying to piece it all together now so that I can add, add some caster back in. So before basically I set it about 7 degrees. 
and uh, the way the diff was sat back on the angle because the arms are obviously under the tie rod would foul on the arms pretty bad so now that I'm bringing the arms on top I can add as much caster as I want and um, I'll never run into clearance with that. I thought about going through the process of double shearing the knuckles and flipping the tie rod to the front all that good stuff but um, yeah just basically wasn't worth it so for the price of 20 mil of up travel and probably losing about 40 mil ground clearance at the back it just is what it is. It ended up being the easier option so um, I'll show you what I've done so far. So this is where we're at right now. We've got uh, my new chassis and brackets in. You can see how low I've had to make them. Um, this is the problem everyone's like, oh, why didn't you go flipped arms, this and that. That's how much clearance you have to the arm when it's flipped. And that's how low you've had to make your bracket. So I've lost heaps of ground clearance at the back. And then up the front, to get them to work properly and still fit the coil over, you run into clearance issues on top. So I'm gonna have to notch my coil tower up about here and brace it more and that's just straight up and down as well so when the diff articulates and rolls I'm also going to run into more issues where the arm's going to come closer to the rail and I'm going to have to bump, bump stop that out so I'm going to lose a fair bit of up travel but it's the only way I'm really going to make it work um, I have also managed to push the diff forward an extra probably 15-20 mil which I know some people might be against it's going to look a bit funny but she's definitely going to drive a bit nicer so in the interest of trying to make things easy for myself, I'm going to cut this side of the bracket off and leave this plate here. So that's going to act as the back side to my new bracket, as I've already done on the other side. And the new plate work just basically welds over top. So she's all braced from behind, and then I'll be able to make my brackets up and square off to the edge of the rail. So it'll come down on a taper and support this side here. And um, yeah, it should be, should be pretty much about the same strength as the old one. But it's going to allow me to run the flipped arms. You can see over there how much lower I've had to make the brackets. But it's just going to be what it is. Alrighty, so I've got my new uh, chassis and radius arm brackets welded in. Um, I've got to do my fin uh, final bracing and that sort of thing on them. So I'm going to plate them all up on the outside of the chassis rail also with some tube to cut where the bolt's going to bolt in. But I've run out of gas on the MIG, so now I'm going to move to my diff side radius arm brackets which are the exact same as the old ones, but obviously they're going to go on top. So I've cut the old ones off. I've got to clean all them up. Um, the new ones are going to go pretty much exactly the width of a radius arm off the other ones because that's how much I brought the other side out um, on the chassis, which will leave me just enough room to squeeze my coil over in on top of the knuckle weld or the ball weld, um, which means I'm going to be able to make my... My coilovers sit there and then I'm going to have to try to tie in my knuckle braces to the coilover mounts um, because obviously that's where the diff's been really bad. So so these are just some universal coilover tabs that I got cut. Um, I'm going to try notch them down and fit them in there. Um, obviously high enough up so that my coilover can clear on articulation and everything. And then yeah, I'm going to have to try to tie in my, my bracing on the top. The bottom's going to be easy. I'm going to do a full truss um, along the front side, um, down to down to both balls, and then one underneath as well, just to just to make sure she's all good. And then I might tie in a couple of little extra gussets on top, just to hold the radius arm brackets um, nice and sound to the housing. And yeah, that should be the front of the of the car done. Once the pan hard and steering box goes in, that's a whole other story. So I've got everything mocked up in there now. Um, both of those brackets for the chassis side are, are in. Um, the diff sitting in there at the right caster angle. I'm trying to aim for about seven to eight degrees. Um, people have their own opinion about that, but I think more cast is better, especially because I'll be running a GU box. It'll be able to steer the steer the 35s that easy. Um, this is what I was saying about the clearances and everything going to get a lot tighter. So my coilovers have to get pushed out all the way to the hub, and there's. Not much clearance. Oh, I can still bring the coil over out a little, but yeah, it's just trying to get everything to fit in there nicely. Um, it's a bit of a prick, but the main thing I'll be worried about is on full down travel, this outside casing of the coil over, it'll come out. Obviously, the diff will be down, the coil over angle will be more like that. It might rub on the hub, so. I'm just going to have to try play with it all 
and get it to sit in there. Um, but yeah, it's all coming together pretty nicely now. So once this is all together, I can work on my pan hard and steering. Got a steering box hopefully coming in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, then I can fuck around with my coil towers. So while we're in here, in terms of steering, I've removed the the factory spline adapter out of the steering column from inside. And this part of the shaft used to go down to the rack but the other way around, so this actually went straight onto the rack. I've now put that onto the factory column. So it's gonna run behind the tower here. And then I'm gonna get a double uni joint set up out of a Kluger or a Corolla or something. And then she'll be able to come straight out here. Double uni joint into the GU box, which I'm gonna to have to cut a large portion of this out to get it to fit. And then make my plates for the side of the chassis rail, but um, yeah. G'day guys, so uh, we're now at the end of episode 2, um, a lot happened, we've nearly got the car back on its wheels, uh, behind me nearly a fully welded out um, front housing, it's ready for a truss, pan hard mounts and bump stop mounts. So yeah, everything's been welded on, she's just covered in a bit of edge primer now. Um, I'm going to go with a full truss from each, uh, each knuckle to the centre, come across like that. Gonna notch in a little piece of pipe over the fill bone. So it's gonna be stepped into the into the truss that so still comes along down here. Gonna pocket it for the radius arm. And then obviously gonna have a pan hub mount probably come up about here on top of the arm somewhere. Hopefully as far over as I can get it without hitting the chassis on up travel. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the front diff. I have my rear diff. She's all cut off, everything's gone. I've cut out the hat because I'm switching to a big center patrol LSD. Um, then I've got to build myself a, a truss for the four link, so just a flat top, so I can put my hinds on the top. And then my lower link tabs, I left the sway bar mounts on there, just in case I can run a GQ patrol sway bar for engineering. Then I'll probably be doing a big, um, you know, your big anti-rock sort of deal with big splined arms and a torsion bar. And then yeah, hopefully next episode I'll be having this thing on its wheels. Um, you'll notice that I had issues in the video, I think I explained it how I had the steering arm contacting the radius arms. Um, so that's all been changed now, it's all been flipped, the chassis side brackets have been changed. I've had to drop them down from the from the rail about 45mm just so I can get the arm to clear on up travel when she goes up she'll hit the chassis about there. So that's all been fixed. I've removed my main fuel tank um, so I'm just going to run a sub tank in the back 90 litres for now. Uh, I'm just going to plumb that up as a single tank system, hopefully I can get the fuel, the fuel gauge to work somehow. Don't know how, um, but I'll see what I can do. And yeah, so four link in the back, GQ patrol diff if I've not already mentioned it, 4-1 ratio, um, just to match the 80 series diff behind me. Done some other cheeky things too. I'll throw in a couple clips now. I've, um, I've actually tubbed the front arches. So I've taken out a decent bit of material just to fit the 37s and I still have to cut um, some of the front balance out just because they're going to they're gonna hit the front now more than the back due to how far I've brought the, brought the diff forwards. So in the last few weeks I've learned shit loads doing this. Um, I don't know how many of you guys that are watching have ever solid axle swapped the car before. It's a big job, let alone doing it with no kit. You know, I've, at the end of the day it would have been a lot faster for me just to buy a kit and adapt it to this chassis but you know, it's just the money and everything I thought I'd save it, but it's all been made up with time. Not that that bothers me, you know, it's a learning experience and, and it is what it is, but I'm having fun, you know, like making lots of fuck-ups, which is good. And they say if you're, not, if you're not making fuck-ups, you're not learning anything, so maybe by the second time round that I do this, maybe on someone else's car, it should come out pretty good. But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to driving this thing again, it's going to be a beast. I didn't really film any of it because it was sort of a bit of a shit job, but I've mounted my shifter in the car, got my stereo and stuff back in. So I've gone for a, a sidewinder, 
Um, bit of a pain. I think it's fucking sick. Proper old school trophy truck sort of deal. Um, then I've just put a single din up the top. My climate control here. I've had to clearance all my tabs and everything just to be able to turn all these around. Um, still cable operated, so I've got to hook them back up. Wire up the radio and then the interior is nearly ready to go back together. Got to make a fully mad little custom panel to cover all that in. And yeah, that's the, the granddad poo brown interior closed off. But yeah, she's all getting there. A couple more things to do on the archers. I've got to chop them all out because the, the front wheel center line is pretty far forwards, roughly there. Um, a lot of diff push in it. But yeah, I just want to close out this video by saying thank you to everyone for watching. Um, I didn't really think that many people give a shit when I started doing it, but I've had a lot of support, which has been cool. A um, few good ideas and a couple of people helping me out, so it's been awesome to get some information off people that have done it before. Um, I look forward to filming episode three. Hopefully this thing will be back on the road for good. A um, few things to do on it still, but yeah, process should be quick now because I already got past all the shit jobs. It's just a steering box and pan hard and then it's all straightforward welding shit together. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.